This one actually had kind of a happy accident with it because I cut the fingerboard too thin. So oh, I, yeah. I added uh, maple underneath right here and then uh -huh. the mahogany on top. Uh, so it gave it this cool like little racer stripe looking thing down the side. Oh, cool. It's a five ply neck too. So it's maple and mahogany in the center, which makes it more structurally sound for me. At least I, I love the sound of that neck. It's really stiff. Yeah. It's a, so, so, you, so you make the design, you pick out the wood. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I basically choose my design, which this one I wanted me to be more of like a super strat kind of a shape. And yeah. I, I really loved the beveled edge look on a couple other guitars, Kiesel's, Ibanez, different brands that I see that on. So I imitated it on this guitar. Mm -hmm. and it really turned out really well. The back looks really nice too. Yeah, back looks incredible. How did so you... Ribbon stripe mahogany on that Sapili. How did you do the uh, color change again? Uh, I dye stained the top close to the edge of where I wanted and then when I did that bevel I started sanding and using files getting it flush with the edge to give it a nice clean edge around it. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Now, uh, awesome. for someone who's like just trying to make their first guitar, what's, some yeah. of, what's something you can suggest to them? Um, maybe like a mistake that you made that you learned from. Um, neck angle. Is neck the angle's thing. a big one? Yes. Okay. We're putting the neck on at the proper angle because this one is a very flat angle. It's very Ibanez Fender style where it comes straight off. It's a hip shot low profile bridge but my first mistake on the one that I made was I inset the neck on it. It was a glued on neck and the neck angle was not set properly. So if I put, uh, the, if I put the bridge on, the bridge was going to be like way up here. Uh -huh. It would have been way too tall. Oh, yeah. So I had to go with our old tech, uh, Josh Buskirk and uh, Jim McBride. We got back together and uh, he used a saw and cut along the edges of the neck and we pulled the neck off because the glue hadn't set, up, set in properly. Jeez. So we pulled that neck off and then uh, I had to re-sand and reshape the neck and make a little biscuit piece to reshape that neck back to where it should have been for that bridge to set properly. That was hectic trying to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> trying to deal with that. <laughs> I, I, it worried me so much once I saw that angle. I was like, oh no, that was a huge mistake. <laughs> but it, it's, it's a lot better now. It's a lot more playable. It's actually one of my favorite guitars aside from this one. Now for the uh, humbucker covers, where'd you get those? Uh, those are actually uh, made uh, by the All Parts Company. All uh, Parts? Yeah, okay. the, these are uh, Babinga covers. They fit right over the Nazgul and Sentient pickups that I bought. So they're the Nazgul and, Sint, uh, Nazgul and Sentient uh, pickups from Seymour Duncan. Okay. So. And uh, could yeah. anyone get those or is that... Yeah, yeah that's uh, something that you could purchase through our store here. Awesome. And what about yeah. the uh, the pegs? Not the pegs, the, uh, the tuner? Not the tuner. Uh, the tuning machines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tuning machines are Grover locking uh, style. They're 18 to 1 gear ratio and they have this locking key on the back that you just run the string through the eyelet and it locks down over top of the string so you don't need a lot of wraps and it stays in tune a lot better. So that's awesome. That's pretty cool. How'd you get the awesome. like two different tones on the headstock? Uh, the, the stripes? Yeah, that's uh, well there it's a lamination, so it's maple oh, it's uh, lamb, mahogany, okay. maple, mahogany, maple, and it's the same way all the way through the neck. There. It's just killer. So, awesome. yeah, what what's your favorite uh, favorite aspect of the guitar you like? Is it the uh, the overall neck thickness. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like how thin it feels up here and then it starts mm -hmm. getting a little bit thicker going this way. And I, okay, I, yeah, yeah. I, I like uh, basing my thumb about in the, in the center of it so it gives me a nice playing, I guess, grip. Mm -hmm. Gives me a nice comfort there. Now when you were making the neck, yeah. did you did you keep, well you started I'm sure with a thicker piece and then you just kind of yeah. slowly did it until you yeah, until uh, it felt comfortable? Or? Yeah, I started off with a piece that was as thick as that bottom part down here and then I uh, put it in my vise and shaped it with rafts and files. Spoke shave uh -huh. is another thing I use. It's a draw knife that you just put on and pull it along with both hands. You pull it along the neck and it shaves off pieces as it goes. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So, yeah, so that's an actual it's, machine that you use to actually... Yeah, it's, it's just a, a tool, a hand tool, and you just pull okay. it like a plane, basically. Okay, yeah, So yeah. it shapes the neck. I used it on m making spokes for tires back in the day. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty that's, cool, man. That's cool. All right, well, thanks for yeah, showing us. No problem, man. Anytime. Mm -hmm.